Um, hi, I am Michael Bean. I'm an acting teacher. And this is your free lesson for myfreeactingclass.com. You can find uh, videos from past lessons at that website. And uh, details of upcoming classes will be there as well. Um, the, today we have uh, casting directors uh, Annalise Tilling and Erin Lally joining us. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about them and then we'll turn it over to them so they can talk about the real life of being a casting director. So before I get into that, I think it's always useful for context, just like where the casting director falls in the food chain so that if you have questions for her after, you ask them knowing sort of what their job is and we can keep that as relevant as possible. Uh, the producer, uh, is the very top of the food chain because they're in charge of the money. So they make all the decisions. They make uh, the final call on who gets cast. Uh, the director is in charge of the story. They're hired by the producer. Uh, the casting director is in charge of casting, which means that they are in charge of the auditions. Um, that's their job. They decide who gets to audition and then they run the audition. They do not decide who gets cast. So don't ask those questions because that's not their job. Their job is to take the like massive sea of actors and hone it down to a nice little exciting group and say, look, people who are the producers of which they're sometimes like 12, uh, you know, here are the people who we have helped find you know, for this audition. Now you get to choose between them. Aren't you so lucky? Uh, so then there's the agent. The agent is, uh, talent agents are uh, professional business people or professional salespeople whose only product is actors. We're basically all the time like, see my actors, see my actors, please see my actors for auditions. Uh, and then us, the actors are way down here uh, at the bottom of the food chain where our job is to be responsible. We're responsible for ourselves and our marketing materials, which, you know, like doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, so. Uh, with that in mind, uh, Annalise sent me a little bit of a bio, and so I will just uh, read that to you. Uh, Aaron Lally and Annalise Tilling are Vancouver-based casting directors. Their recent credits include The Boy 2, starring Katie Holmes, upcoming Netflix feature Operation Christmas Drop, starring, starring Alexander Ludwig, and series such as Jordan Peele's reboot of The Twilight Zone, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, Nancy Drew, and iZombie. Uh, both Annalise and Aaron are passionate about film and television and thrive at the challenge of finding just the right performer to bring a character off the page and into life. Uh, right? This is the fun part you know, of that job. And so I'm excited to ask them about that. Uh, as avid viewers of a wide range of genres, uh, they do, of course, have their favorites. Aaron particularly enjoys a good British cop drama with a little dry wit. And Annalise likes to be fully immersed in worlds unlike our own, from period dramas to sci-fi and everything in between. Uh, one quick little pop over here to their uh, IMDB pages. You know, Annalise, da -da, all the fancy stuff, all the fancy stuff. Uh, and I can come and paste these right into the chat window if you want to multitask and you're like, you know, uh, seeing them in person isn't quite enough. I also you know, want to see uh, what it is that they have been working on. Uh, and so I will do that for you. Here's Aaron, I Zombie, The X Files, War for Planet of the Apes, X Men movies, fancy stuff. Uh, and uh, now let's turn it over to them. And uh, because uh, I don't actually know how to highlight two people at the same time, uh, I think I'll probably just uh, maybe pop back and forth between them. You know, or maybe we'll just go here into uh, gallery mode and we'll you know, see everybody at the same time. Cool. Uh, Annalise, Erin, thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. This is great. Um, and so can you start... Thanks for having us. Uh, can you start by talking about uh, what your job actually looks like? I think every time actors get to hear sort of what that process looks like, where you, when you are sort of get a project from a producer you know, and sort of send out the information to talent agents, you know, say, saying, okay, here's the characters we need, then what? Mm -hmm. Oh, Aaron, or you or me? You take it away, Annalise. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we would generally get a script. Um, we would read through the script and try to get a sense of all the roles, um, try to see them in our heads, at least that's what I do. Um, immediately send it off to get broken down, it's called, where they break down um, descriptions for each character that we'll be looking for. Um, we will then send that to producers for approval um, to get any notes on the character, something that they might be thinking about the character that might not necessarily be in the script. Um, 
go through that a few times um, and then generally send it out to the agents and then they will submit their actors who they think could be right for the role um, based on the description and sometimes they'll send actors that aren't quite the description but they think it could be fun so that can work out sometimes and give you some really cool ideas that maybe wasn't written on the page um, or you know it could be something that's very specific and that's what we're looking for and that's what we have to have um, so then once we've seen all of those suggestions we would go through and select the suggestions that we think would be worth reading that we could see in the part that we think might have something interesting to bring to it um, these days of covid it's pretty much all via self-tape so we would request self-tapes from people the really cool thing if there can be a cool thing about covid because it's awful um, but the one one of the good things i would say is that we can cast a really wide net right now previously you know you would be limited to however much studio time you have and hours in the day before you need to send those auditions out whereas now we can get a ton more self tapes we can see a lot more people um and then we would still narrow it down the way we've always done send it to producers um they would you know we'll narrow it down to however many maybe we'd send between two and ten depending on the type of role it is um then take it from there um, they would, you know, sometimes want to see callbacks, sometimes want to see people read with each other, sometimes they want a whole fresh batch of actors because it wasn't quite what they were thinking. Um, then once they pick somebody that they love, we have to get a ton of people to approve it generally, and then we have to negotiate with the agents, and then we have to keep it on schedules, paperwork, <laughs> schedules, I mean, there's, it goes on and on. So I've probably done a really big spiel about it, but, um, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot too. I'm sure there's other things too that I've missed. Little, little minor things throughout. It's fun because it's like half creative and half logistics. So you can use both sides of those, those brains mm -hmm. if, you're, if you like doing both, um, which I do. Uh, Me too. Karen, uh, when you send a role out to agents, do you have sort of a ballpark for people of approximately how many submissions uh, you'll get, even if it's just a, even if it's a fairly broad range, I think it would be useful for people to hear that, you know, and, yeah. and how many tapes you guys are seeing these days? It depends um, on the kind of character too, because like if it's something that's, you know, male or female, 20s to 40s, two lines, if, if you're looking like all across Canada, you'd get hundreds and hundreds of submissions. Like, you know, we've got over, three, 400 submissions, probably more if Toronto's included. Um, if it's like a very specific age and needs to have like a specific skill or there's something very, or if it's a much larger role and requiring someone with a bigger resume and experience, um, you're still like looking 100? at- A hundred? hundred, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and of those hundred people, um, how many tapes uh, are you typically seeing for a role right now? Sure. Um, I would say in the past when it's been live auditions, depending on the role, you would see like between 10 to 15 people, maybe yeah. less if there's just a couple of people that you know each one of them will nail it, you're familiar with their work, you don't need to see a ton. Sometimes more if it's like a one-liner and you're looking for a new actor to give them a shot, so they need to see a little bit more. Um, these days, I would say maybe depending on the role between 20 to 50 self-tapes per role. What do you think, Erin? Well, I think that there's, um, especially when, when Annalise and I are doing a project we with COVID, during, during COVID, um, there are roles where we know they're good uh, showcases to see new actors. So we will request more self-tapes for two or three roles on a project, knowing that we, you know, it's a good sort of pre-screen opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's roles where we know we need, you know, someone solid and experienced and we'll request, you know, about the same amount of people that we would if we were going to see them in the room because uh, we know all of those sort of people are busy and everyone's you know self-taping and managing all of the other aspects of their lives at the moment um uh and maybe just a little more because also it's quite busy out there and you never know when people get you know booked before you have a chance to send them to your executive so um but usually on a show there there's a there's a couple of roles or you know sides that are great showcases where we can kind of see fresh faces mm. and, and we'll and have more for those 
And there are also times where the submissions, maybe there's not enough of the right type of person that they're looking for. Um, but we may have remembered from an audition like months ago, some great actor that it might only be, it might be a bigger person uh, or like someone with a lot more um, experience or it could be someone who just nailed a one-liner that was so memorable that we make notes of people that just like nailed it. And sometimes we'll, you know, if those people aren't suggested, we have in the back of our mind, oh, X, Y, Z would be great. So let's get them as well. And that's called an, unrec or that's an, um, a self tape request that we would generally make for a lot of the time there's because we already have in our heads like who we kind of see plus it's nice to kind of go out of that box and see other people too but if there are people we want to see that haven't been suggested um then yeah we'll definitely try to see them as well i know that a lot of actors as they're making that transition to self tapes you know are really thinking about the answer to the question you know, what does make for a memorable self tape you know, so if you had to put words to it you know, in kind of whatever way feels right, you know, that example of, you know, somebody just nails a one-liner, like some, especially, you know, maybe a face that you haven't seen before, you know, which I'm sure some of our actors are thinking of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they want to make a good impression. They're thinking about like, you know, what does that look like? Uh, sort of nailing a self-tape. If you're watching a self-tape and you're like, wow, this one, you know, can you put words to that? What is it? Um, Good quality is very important. Um, the actual tape so, itself. Um, so good lighting, having a, a wide shot, and then and it's hard, especially for people that are living alone um, and don't have someone to operate a camera for them or read with them. Um, but you know, having a wider shot and then uh, zooming into a close up for the majority of it, which is what we would do if we were taping it in a studio, um, and good sound, and if you can a good reader a good or bad reader can kill a self tape um pretty quickly and and i mean these days everyone you know i try to ignore it but it does you know or if the reader is way too close to the camera and they're way louder or the reader is you know unfortunately you on your phone reading back to yourself which i get logistically is what has to happen in some cases but just making sure that the levels are the same and the reader isn't you know hitting higher and louder than the performer uh, is important to me when I'm watching them. Uh, and I like slates to come second. I like to see the, the scene first, but you know, sometimes they're just the order of the clips is are uploaded and it's not a big deal, but quality is important. Great. Um, I, it, sometimes it's really hard to describe what makes that person pop, but I would say like, because sometimes it's a twinkle in someone's eye, or I feel like maybe it's, this is, I don't know how you would act or how you would learn this, but like some kind of inner confidence in the character, I guess. Like, um, well, knowing so, the material as well. The, like, oh, actually, actually getting the lines right. The amount of people that <laughs> don't get the one liner right. And the thing is, if you're in the room, if there's time, we can generally do it a couple times, but. You're, well, I guess you're doing that with a self tape. You're practicing it a bunch, but in the room, man, there's a lot of people that don't know their lines and it's crazy. Um, if you can find, if, if the tone allows for it, sometimes someone will make us laugh that maybe a spot that, that, but it has to feel real that maybe they just have got this little something with this character and they've just done something really different with it or, or brought something of themselves to it instead of just reading it. Mm. Gotcha. So, so one of the things that really makes it pop is, so I heard, uh, the technical setup is very important. And then the, the, there's just some kind of intangible sense of like really feeling like you are seeing the person and the story, you know, together. You know? Yeah. yeah. Which okay. I think if, if you, if you've got your setup, your professional setup and you know, the material, even if it's, even if it's a couple of lines, even if it's a big guest star, it's 10 page size. Like if you're confident with it and you can bring yourself out to it, that that's really cool to see. Great. That's fantastic feedback. Nope. And I think if it's, um, like a one liner waitress or cop, or, you know, like something that's kind of a standard television day player role, feel free to do it a couple of times mm -hmm. in different ways, not a couple of times the same way. But again, if you were in the room and it was a one-liner and 
you missed, you know, we know things about the tone of the show sometimes, especially if it's a series that hasn't aired yet, um, that we might tell you in the room. Uh, but, you know, feel free on a self-tape, you know, if it's not a big scene, to, to try it in two different ways. Um, because it's it's fun to watch the same writing come across in two different ways. And that's another way we can see as well that you have layers and can be directable. Because that's one of the things in the room, if you give a note and you can't follow the note, you know it's going to be tricky if the director wants to give you some some differences, some changes, and but you have it set how you're going to do it. So it is nice to see a few different ways, I would say, if like Aaron said, it's a small enough role that you can do it a couple times. Uh, and for those folks who haven't seen them, occasionally it will say in the breakdown, you know, uh, you know, just do one or yeah. you know, go ahead and put in a couple of takes. Mm -hmm. uh, something that uh, we've had, it's been a couple of months since we had a, a casting uh, director on, you know, but that we've heard from uh, other casting directors is that they are, especially with self-tapes, often making their assessment uh, very rapidly. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, uh, it's something that I'd love to get you to speak about without telling you too much about what we've heard from other people, just so that we can, you know, hear what that looks like for you. If, if you are, if you are looking at a self-tape and sort of making your assessment of character and story and, and technique, uh, very quickly as you're watching the tape, or if you are you know, going to watch all uh, the tape all the way to the end and make that assessment afterwards. Uh, sure. Um, in terms of watching it all the way to the end, it depends on the size of the role. If you're talking, we've got a guest star and there's like three different scenes and it's like 10 minutes plus, we try to watch everything. Right. Um, but you can generally tell as well. And also depending on the person, the person's skill level, you can kind of tell early on. Mm -hmm. Um, but we do love to give opportunities, like Aaron said, showcasing kind of newer people, maybe with something a little bigger than they've done before. Um, but generally, we, we do try to watch everything because actors are taking the time to put themselves on tape to learn the material. Um, if they're not right for that role, they maybe they're right for another thing. Or maybe they're great, but they're just not that role. And that's something that we always try to remember as well. Um, yeah, anything? Thank you. I, I, I hope you don't mind me putting you on the spot. Yeah. Oh, no, it's true. No, it's, it's a good point because we are getting more self-tapes, but I would say... There's, oh, yeah. Go on, Aaron. Oh, um, uh, there's an, you can tell if someone has put the work in. I mean, uh, we, not to reiterate this, but saying the lines as they're written because writers have thought about them is really important. Paraphrasing everything that they think they're getting right is... We, we know. We've watched it 10 times already. So if you haven't learned the dialogue, it doesn't have to be exact, but as close to exact as possible. Um, some shows are more sticklers than others for that. Like you've got to be word for word, whereas others do have a little flexibility, but you don't want to take that chance. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, so if you're going to do a self tape and you're kind of just getting the gist of the scene, but you're not getting the dialogue right, I, we might not finish it because it's not good. You're not, you didn't do the work. And in our in previous lessons, we've heard everything from, you know, I'll watch the first minute, you know, to uh, one who was like, yeah, you know, I'll be honest, I only watched the first 30 seconds, you know, if that. You know, so uh, this is one of the advantages of having Annalise and Aaron today is that they haven't had time to get tired of watching actors. <laughs> no, but it's been great. You know what? As soon as like COVID hit, we were finishing up casting a feature and we had all our callbacks lined up. So we had to do them all on Zoom. We had to figure it out at the end of March. And it was such a great use of time. And to be able to see actors and see characters on screen when we can't do it live, it's still awesome. And everyone was excited to have something to do. So and like the director was excited. She was in LA. We were all at home. Like the actors were excited. So it was probably their first time ex doing it. Exercise. Yeah. Like it was like 20 minute auditions. Yeah. It was, it was really cool. Um, okay. Well, given uh, that we're you know, two thirds of the way through, uh, I could keep asking you questions for all of our time, but let's see if we've got questions from any of the folks here. Uh, so it's a small enough group uh, that you can probably just jump in, but if you want to wave your hand in the air, uh, then uh, that'll make it even easier. Yeah, 
Go ahead and jump in, Kara. Um, when you're choosing who you're auditioning for a role, um, how much does, like, in terms of the weight of whether or not you're going to see someone for a role, um, look versus experience and resume, where does that all fall in? Um, I would say if it's an actor that we know is a strong actor and they've been submitted, then that right off the bat, we know it's experience. So we'll, you know, that's something we definitely look for. Um, if you have the right look, we'll check out resumes. We'll check out who your agent is um, because some agents, we just know they're great at assessing talent and they wouldn't have someone on their roster that wasn't strong. So that can be really helpful. Um, if you have a really cool look and we've not seen you before and it's one of those roles that we can, you know, see maybe a lot more people than we normally would, um, that's super helpful too. Um, if you have a really bad headshot um, that just doesn't represent you or doesn't do anything for you, um, that doesn't help. Um, if, yeah, uh, it's a mix of all, I would Total say. Total mix of everything. Yeah, and it depends on the role too. Cool, thank you. Okay, uh, Lori, Candy, Mara, do you wanna jump in there? Okay. Um, the, uh, oh. Oh. oh, sorry. Please go for hey. it. Hey, okay, just getting you. my technology happening here with the uh, tablet and the phone, you know, sound mm -hmm. and all that. <laughs> it's working well. Um, wanted to know, when you mentioned the uh, two takes off the, off the top, um, would that, I guess that would be indicated in the submission from your agent just to say, Hey, I've got two, two looks here. Or would you pop that on your tape at the, at the top, off the top as well? I don't think, well, I mean, we generally don't put that in a breakdown. Mm. Your agent, I know some agents are very specific about don't send us multiples or some that say go for it. I mean, and, and that's up to them. If your agent won't be too mad at you, we would suggest, you know, do a couple worst they're going to say is, it is only said one. Maybe they'll look at it and they'll just send your best one. Yeah. Maybe other people and I would it. say it's like choose. I mean, you don't have to do it for every audition. I would just do it if, if the role could be played two ways and you, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they're, and they're clearly different and you can nail both of them. And particularly As opposed to doing two takes the same way. Oh no, always different. Yeah. And, and particularly uh, earlier, I heard you say that that was, um, for smaller roles that that was you know uh, much uh, sort of more acceptable or sort of best practice yeah Is that accurate yeah 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 i mean there's times all roles like you you know if you've got like a three a big three scene guest star i i wouldn't advise you do that a couple of different right. ways the whole thing but maybe you have like a real emotional turn at the end of one of them and there's a couple of ways it's not super you know there's a couple of choices you have i mean you could always i'd be cool with a couple of versions um that's just me. Other people might feel strongly otherwise. Mm, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Uh, Candy, did you want to jump in with the question as well? Okay. Hi. Hi. Thank you Hi. so much for uh, everything you've shared. It's awesome. Excellent. So my question, well, I guess it's kind of two, um, is how did each of you like even get into wanting to be a casting director? I think that's super cool. And also, if you were to cast someone to play yourself in your own life story, who would you cast? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. I've had the same person, which I probably should pick someone new, um, but for the longest time, uh, and it's been local, I mean, just locally, I'm like, if I was to write a short film about myself when I was in university, it would be AJ Cook, um, who was a local actress who's on CSI or NC, one of those shows. Um, uh, for a long time, but I feel like I should probably upgrade it. <laughs> um, I would, I would not upgrade, but update. <laughs> sorry, she's fine. She doesn't, she's, she's... I, I'm going to shoot big here only because I really like her energy and I think she's so cool. And I feel like we'd be friends if we hung out, but I'm going to go Rachel McAdams. Cause I wish I had dimples like that too. Um, <laughs> but, but in getting into, into casting, um, for me, I worked in a in a few different roles in film and TV. Like I started out as a PA a million years ago. I worked at the BBC in London um, and did a lot of kind of um, 
stage door type assistant roles there. And between being outside at midnight in pouring rain and snow for like 15 hour plus before you even get overtime to like making tea for somebody over and over again, I'm like, I want to work in casting. Like I just, I've always loved stories. Um, and I always imagine who I would cast. Like even if, you know, you read a book, you watch a movie, who, if that person hadn't done it, who would have done it better? Um, I've always just found it so fun. Like it's, it's methodical enough that it's like, it's business, but it's also fun and you get to explore your imagination. And so basically I just hunted down when I moved back to Canada after living in London for a while, I hunted down every casting director in Vancouver, um, checked out their IMDb, see, I figured out who I wanted to work with the most. Um, and I just stalked them all, called their assistants, sent out. And that was me. That's amazing. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. So I just was like it wasn't super me. persistent. It wasn't, but it could have been. We probably just missed each other like a ship in the night. Yeah. Cliches are not awesome. But anyway, um, yeah. So I just like knew what I wanted to do and I just didn't give up. And I just was like, I'm getting a job here. Um, and then once I kind of got that initial job, I just loved it and just learned. And it can be really, it can be really stressful and really, really tough. And you're working on lots of shows together at the same time and lots of negotiating. It's not just sit back and watch tapes. It's like negotiating with agents and schedules and this, that, and the other. And, but it's all really awesome. Some more than others, some bits more than others. <laughs> <laughs> um, I fell into it by accident. Um, I ended up working in a casting office right out of university um, just because it was a friend of a friend and uh, loved it and loved the projects we got to do. And I've always loved um, like just really good performances, especially kids and watching kid careers sort of go like, I mean, at the time, famous kids. Um, uh, and now the little kids in Vancouver that you get to see go from one-liners to various things um and so I sort of ended up by accident and I did it for four or five years and but I really wanted to be on set so I left uh for about 10 years and assisted various actors and have always kind of been around them at very at sort of different levels and love from that side the business of being in show business like watching um like very successful people have to still negotiate you know their daily lives and and they have to be in bad moods and just sort of understanding the process of of being an actor at every level at, at trying to get a one-liner in Vancouver to you know being a movie star and having your dad still tell you that you're being a uh, egomaniac um and so I did that for about 10 years and then I decided I want to go back into casting so I did that about six years ago I went, got back into it and Annalise and I went out on our own and here we are cool uh, we're we're coming up on on 4:30, and you know, all the folks here had a chance to jump in with their uh, question. Um, can I ask both of you if there is you know any piece of advice that you would offer you know to uh, actors, you know, uh, you know, young actors or new actors? You know, is there anything in particular that you'd like to leave people with as advice, something to think about? Um, keep training. Um, and it doesn't have to be in classes. It doesn't have to cost money, but if, even if you're auditioning, uh, or not getting as many auditions to keep working, the muscle is really important and training, um, even in a not necessarily formal way. Um, but also it's good to do it formally so you can put it on your resume, I think is really important. Fantastic. Yeah, I would say, Pretty much the same thing. Darn you, Aaron, for getting in there first. Um, if you're not in it, like even if you know you're around other actors, you're like, you know, with a group of friends and someone's writing a play and you're doing your reads together and you're yeah. just like in the world. Whereas I find and and I totally get the importance of having real jobs, and that's so important too. Um, because not everybody can make a full-time living off it but if you are going to do it be it full-time or a little bit even if it's a little bit still your head should be in the game and like aaron said taking a class that doesn't have to cost a ton of money um just staying involved and being passionate about it because i i know some people who used to act full-time and then they would kind of they forgot about it and they came back in a little bit but they were doing their whole day was consumed by other stuff which is fine but then they would jump into an audition 
and it was like a whole other world. It wasn't familiar. It was just very jarring and you can feel that. So I feel like if you love it, you don't have to do it if you can't make the money and pay your rent. It doesn't have to be a full time, but I feel like if you love it, there's other ways to keep at it full time, even if it's just thinking about, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And my other piece of advice is before every audition, watch something those people have made before. It is shocking how, I mean, not shocking. Um, you know, every, like if you, if you know, even if it's a show that hasn't been made and you can find that showrunner on a different show, watch half an hour of what they wrote to see what they're doing the day before your audition. Do a little research on the people so you know, I mean, maybe their tone is, we did a show for three or four years and the tone was completely different than anything else that was on that network. And 95% of the people that came in the room had no idea. And I would have to tell them for eight hours a day, like this is a dry comedy and you, you know, you have to pick up the pace, pick up the pace or, you know, cause they had never watched anything. And this was like season three or four. So at that point you're just getting annoyed. Um, uh, and also just watch, like watch a show and just watch all the small roles and watch, watch the performances with an eye to pay attention to how little they do or how much they do. Or, um, you know, I, even I watch like a show and I'm like, like a waitress walks in a room and puts a plate down and says two words and leaves and doesn't make a meal of it and isn't you know but you have half the time you don't notice her unless you pay attention the writing on me is getting ridiculous what? um right <laughs> yeah like uh, honestly the one car across me is, <laughs> is getting so dark um uh you know so so like spend an hour if, like, and this is part of the working the muscle if even if you don't have an acting class at that time spend an hour once a week watching a show even if you don't like this, the genre of that style of acting so that when it does come up, you know, if it's sci-fi and it's Vancouver or it's comic book and it's Vancouver, um, uh, you've seen, you know, the tone and the levels that people go to in, the, in all the guest star and the small roles. Beautiful. Uh, can I say one more thing? Um, yeah. it, it may, it, this, there's always an exception to this, but I would say more often than not, like don't be afraid to also throw it away. <laughs> like be yourself. No, be yeah. real don't make a meal of it like Aaron said um if you're just kind of like saying it a lot of your you know as we're talking now I'm not sitting there over analyzing every word I'm saying and it's coming out fake you just spew it out sometimes and it feels more real uh beautiful okay uh well uh thank you so much uh Annalise and Aaron for making time for us we really appreciate it Thanks for having us, guys. Oh my gosh, so great. So, I, I give these guys some love and then uh, we're off to the next thing. Cool. Thank great. you. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thanks.